This time on Black Pettermaniac Shooting, the family and I are headed to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. An easy 11 hour drive from our hometown in Kentucky, and we're going on a little bit historical adventure. Meanwhile, before we get there, the girls are singing. He's down, down, loaded up and trucking. We don't need what they say can't be done. We've got a long way to go, and it's short time to get there. We walked right past Independence Hall where some of the most Famous Americans met to order to put together the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. Actually, we were heading for the Museum of the American Revolution. I've been wanting to see this place for several years uh, since I heard about it. It finally opened and uh, we're going to go in there and we're specifically going to uh, show you a lot of the firearms of the day. This is a contract musket. Richard Wilson and Company of London, England. It's circa around 1757. Powder horns. More flintlock rifles with swords. A few rifled firearms. The sign says they came from Germany. The one on the left is also very long. This one's done by gunsmith John Christian Olter. He made this rifle in 1774, about 10 miles north of Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. In June of 1775, the Second Continental Congress authorized the recruitment of expert riflemen in Pennsylvania, Maryland, and Virginia. They were armed with rifles just like this one. Here's a fusel, lock probably made by John Clark, Holborn, from London, England, 1765 to 1775. Here's a pattern 1756 long land musket. Kind of like a brown bass. That baby is long. How about a Ferguson rifle? That's what these are. Pretty neat looking original guns. Here's some guns used in the um, New York campaign during 1776. All kinds of different ones. The one on the left is awful short. The Black Pettermaniac Shooters vacations are always full of excitement. Here we are having to leave the building due to a fire alarm going off. Attention, attention, an emergency has been reported in this building. Please cease operations and leave the building. Utilizing 
the nearest exit or fire exit stairway. Do not use elevators. Repeat, do not use elevators. You're being evacuated. Look at that. You gotta leave the museum. Man. It's a kind of emergency. Somebody in the building apparently pulled a fire department alarm, and uh, the fire department's gonna have to come by here and re you know, check the building out. We'll go back in and check out the rest of those fine firearms from the Museum of the American Revolution. Wow. It seems like we're always full of action when we go on vacations. Last year, uh, we were hit by a drunk driver coming out of a wrong way on a one-way street down in Charleston, South Carolina. And this year, we're in the Museum of the American Revolution here in Philadelphia, and uh, the fire alarm is tripped. And we found out that a toddler uh, pulled the fire alarm inside, and therefore the fire department has to show up and take care of it. Never a dull venture when you run around with the Black Petter Maniac Shooters family. Do the museum backwards because they let us back in. We're going to finish running the tour, show you some more of those fine looking smoke poles. <laughs> so got no bay in the way right now. I'm going to come up here and look at this. Man, look at all the fine looking smoke poles. Arms of American independence. And since the fire alarm is over with, there's nobody up here. I get to take a picture of these with no bells in the way. And I'll come back to it a while and look at them a little closer. Show them the air. The museum says the first one is a fouling piece. A fouling piece. Three is a musket. Smooth rifles, number four. Rifle with the bayonets, number five. Six is a pattern 70 56 long land musket. Seven just a musket. Made in Massachusetts. Number eight. Made in Virginia. Number nine is a fusel. Ten is a smooth rifle. This is a blunderbuss. Uh, what I would call a canoe gun almost, as short as it is. Uh, the lock was dated 1741. Uh, it's a short-barreled weapon that, uh, that uh, had a flare at the end of the mouth, uh, easy to load with multiple pieces of shot, and then they sprayed the deck with metal when fired. Here's some weapons from the Battle of Cowpens. Uh, and some of them are pretty cool looking guns. Uh, they are, they're kind of rough looking, which tells me that they're probably period correct guns. And, um, Man, a devil of a whipping is what the display said. And uh, there's some very fine looking guns in this one. This is a pattern 1779 musket. This one was carried by a soldier in the 23rd Regiment, or Royal Welsh uh, Fusilers. It was likely among the arms surrendered by the regiment at Yorktown on 19 October 1781. Now that's really cool. I'll tell you what, that's a fantastic place to go visit, especially if you like early American smoke poles from the uh, American Revolution War era. So, uh, yeah, just keep it running. That is a very fascinating. That is a very fascinating place to uh, visit if you like early American smoke poles. Lots of brown bass in there and so forth from the American Revolution War era. Go check it out. Love to read your comments about this one. Gonna go back to shooting videos after this one. Yeah, the girls are at it again. They're singing on the way home. Well, this time we're not eastbound and down, as the song says. We're westbound and heading back to Kentucky. Eastbound and down, loaded up and trucking. Are we going down?
is what they say can be done. We've got a long way to go, and a short time to get there. I'm just kind of what y'all